talk about just to kind of get warmed up is some single string um, stuff. Um, this is really cool stuff. I like to mess around with um, fives and sevens. And, um, and we'll just do something in E minor for simplicity. Um, <clears throat> now, a sequence of fives is going to be this. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. And then you just move it through the shapes. So if we start up on the high uh, E on 24, you got one, two, three, four, five. Now, because of where you end, the cool thing about this is the next pattern ascends. So the first one descends, one, two, three, four, five, and then you get an ascend, and one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So, one, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Anyway, that's the idea. You can also take fives um, across in your positions. Um, actually, before I do that, let's look at it in just one position. So. Okay, that's it in one position. Okay, now you can also take it in multi positions, extended sequences. going across a three octave run okay um, so you can actually connect some of these ideas um, like you could do single string um, and then like a three octave kind of idea um, and see if you can pull it off <laughs> ideas that actually kind of go that way or this way, whichever, as opposed to the ever common going up or descending that way. So you could actually do something like... Uh, like okay, that's pretty cool. uses of five, single string technique, um, straight across, um, three octaves this way, and you know, I'm not really sure what the octave equation is that way, it's not, that's not really the point. The point is um, the many different ways you can take the, the fives, which is, which is the point of that, and yeah, you know, pick like hell. Um, that's the other idea. Let's see. You could probably take it across a double string technique too, like... There we go. That's cool, like... So, there's double string fives. 
See if we can do strings giving fives, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Now, let's go to sevens, which is one of my favorites. Um, if you can't already tell from like my website and my songs and CD-ROM and all that stuff. So, sevens, single string sevens. <laughs> sevens um, across uh, a single string. Now, of course, you can do the uh, ever so famous sevens through the three octave kind of dealy. Let's see. Um. <laughs> Sevens ascending that much. Um, ascending is just. Whoops. Let's see. Another cool thing to do is take um, your fives and sevens and um, mix them up a little bit. Like you could do a single string um, fives and sevens. So you could do. And, and there's going to be three groups, because remember when you're doing the fives, um, the first group descends, and then the second group ascends. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So... like that, there's a mixture of fives and sevens, and it's kind of cool going across as well, too. Sonic lick with the blues, blues note added in. All right, here's another one. This is a kind of an alternate picking lick. Um, for the most part, all this stuff that I'm showing you on here, I play legato as well. Um, in my playing, I do just as much legato as I do alternate picking, and um, so, you know, at any given time I can play any of these licks, legato or alternate picking, whatever, you know, whatever it calls for. Um, this next lick is kind of, uh, kind of what I call a, a lick that goes nowhere, and um, as you'll soon see, uh, my hand's moving across the fretboard, but the sound's really not doing anything. <laughs> Thank you. 
same kind of thing, I just moved it around. <laughs> down, we have a repeat note, then we can add a note, yet again. to um, bust out of the normal three octave run, like a normal three octave run would be this. sequencing down twice on each individual string, you do it three times. Now you still only start with um, three notes on the high string. So you're going to do that. And then, so... you could sequence back up if you wanted to like this. Slow, you got 
got some other D harmonic minor, or just harmonic minor ideas. It doesn't mean that you have to play them in D harmonic minor. Um, this is a pretty cool idea. I like this. <laughs> sequence that you can do and you know I'm just picking scales at random you can really once you understand the sequences and whatnot uh, with what's going on with the, the melodic idea you just put it in whatever mode or whatever scale that you want to use it in it's important to understand the sequence okay um, here's the sequence for this next idea um, this was normally a seven string idea but I've had to condense it um, down to the six string so... Okay, you can do that, and you could possibly even extend it up one more note. ideas that you can do like in a pentatonic scale. There's kind of a, a blues thing that's pretty cool. Um, you're going to combine two elements. You're going to combine, actually, you're actually going to com combine e, uh, e pentatonic and you're going to combine E blues. The first half of the sequence is just... Okay, just a E blues. Uh, and then you got E pentatonic. Alright, then you can combine those two ideas. You go. And then right here I do a combination idea where you go. That kind of brings the two ideas together. minor pentatonic, combine some blues notes and whatnot, and this is actually um, part of a solo that's going to be on my upcoming CD um, instead of a song called The Duel. <laughs> It's kind of tricky.
Some other things that you can do intervallically that are that are really cool. You can you can do uh, single string triads, which I talked a little bit about, a little bit about in um, Shred Guitar Manifesto, but it was more of I used it more in the uh, legato workout kind of sense. But you can take these single string triads and really do some cool stuff with them. And I'm just gonna briefly touch on it a little bit here. It's you know you could do a lot more with it than what we're going to talk about here. This is just kind of from an alternate picking standpoint. Um, you could do like a... So if you're in a key of D minor, you got three minor triads. D minor, uh, G minor, and A minor. So... That's just D minor. So we can do a couple of sequences. And then I like to add this in. Okay, that's the 
the first first time. Second time down, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do some variations. <laughs> difficult at least it's difficult for me it might be easy for you I don't know um, uh, I'm not a diehard alternate picker uh, but uh, anyway the accent tones are on weird notes um, and it, it always seems to fall on an uncomfortable note for me um, anyway here goes the next part <laughs> tough piece man and and to uh, master something like that you gotta stay on top of it all the time and I work on you know a lot of other techniques I'm not like I said I'm not just a die-hard ultimate picker I work just as much on my legato playing tapping you know sweeping economy picking using all fingers on this hand and this hand so my, my playing style is an amalgamation of, of many different ideas therefore I don't focus on just one area uh, you know, there were there was times years ago when I just was an alternate picker and, and a sweet picker when I was a kid and, you know, didn't know any better. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I think that's going to be it, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
see ya.